But you, but you know, uh, Cameron last year interviewed me and he wore shorts. And, and, and he said that his reason for wearing shorts was that his uh, luggage got lost. Every year it gets lost, that's not my problem. <laughs> but, but it didn't get lost this year because he called me from San Francisco and if he asked me if I would dress just like him and if I would wear shorts. So I promised him that I would indeed dress just like him. <laughs> So, so um, I, I did that on purpose, really, because it's, it's all too easy to take somebody wearing shorts not seriously. And, and I know that because I play golf with Cameron, so it's really easy for me to take him not seriously. Especially but, with my score. <laughs> uh, I'm Larry Brilliant. Um, I am working uh, as part of Google and as part of Skoll. And I work uh, in technology and in the nonprofit world, and I have led a double life, some say psychotic, um, trying to balance those two worlds. And I think f one of the things I love about FIRE is that many people here in this room share my multiple personality disorder. And we all live in both of those worlds. You're going to be privileged to hear from one of the people who has excelled in both of those worlds, uh, Cameron Elahi. And I just want to tell you a little bit about him um, because I want to build credibility about him because he's wearing shorts. <laughs> um, he might be the most successful serial entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. There are a lot of claimants for that. Uh, but he has started as an entrepreneur 10 companies, 10 startups. Five of them have had exits that were uh, enormously successful. Three of them were multi-billion dollar exits, two among the most successful IPOs in history. Three lost, and there are two lottery tickets still running. Um, Cirrus Logic, uh, one of his best known companies, uh, rose to be one of the largest chip companies in America. As a venture capitalist, he's had a, a yet to be determined, because all of his lottery tickets are still running, uh, set of success stories. And why I say that to you and boast about Cameron is because he's now going to make a U-turn, which I hope more and more people are making as they first taste success with their God-given talents in business, industry, and technology and they take those talents and begin increasingly to address the very serious problems that we face in the world. And he's going to be introducing today uh, something called the U Movement. This is really his worldwide release. You are uh, uh, Khan or uh, uh, Sundance, and he's not quite a film, but you're his film festival. And he's going to tell you about a way in which uh, programs that he has been developing and ideas that he has been inculcating from his business world can help to accomplish the world's great tasks. And uh, I'll let him tell you more about them, except to tell you that these big problems that we face in the world, children's literacy, infant mortality rates, disease prevalence, economic development, uh, they, they are uh, being approached on a kind of haphazard basis. Um, the United Nations finally tried to put them all together and, uh, as a business would do, develop uh, annual, uh, decennial, decade-long um, targets, which they call the Millennium Development Goals. And Cameron... Uh, was asked to come in as the technologist to look at those Millennium Development Goals. And the first thing he saw was that we were failing as a world, as a species. And he has come up with a way that he believes he can use his technology experience and his networks to help us reach those Millennium Goals. So uh, with no further ado, Cameron, how are you going to help us reach these goals? What are they? Well. Uh in 2000, uh, under direction of Kofi Annan, uh, Secretary General of UN at that time, 
uh, the heads of nations of 195 countries came together and uh, they all signed uh, uh, an agreement to go and uh, define a set of 15-year goals uh, called Millennium Development Goals, eight of them. Uh, first one, for example, is reduction of poverty in the whole world by 50%. A uh, second goal was uh, universal access to education up to sixth grade all over the world. Uh, third one is reduction of infant mortality. Uh, fourth one is uh, the uh, uh, promotion of gender equality, uh, elimination of uh, HIV AIDS and uh, malaria is goal number five, I believe, or six, I can't remember. Uh, environment, uh, sustainability, uh, uh, global warming. Uh, so eight wonderful goals, everybody came and signed up that they want to push these things. And uh, last September, I was invited to go to UN Summit to have the halfway review. It was actually eight years past of the 15 years. And uh, everybody's belief was not a hell of a lot had happened or as much as needed had happened. And uh, According to UN goals, 89% of world population did not know what these goals were. And uh, according to my simple samples, 99.9% of world population doesn't know about these goals. But uh, what is interesting is uh, millions and millions of different nonprofit organizations, public benefit organizations, NGOs have been working on these things in many different parts of the world and the uh, real fantastic work of a lot of social entrepreneurs and the people who were activists. And a uh, few people know about the activities that are going on. And uh, we thought maybe there is something that technology could do about this. And then in November of uh, last year, I attended the uh, uh, UN financial conference. Every seven years, UN has a financial conference and uh, the ministers of finance of uh, 195 countries came there in Doha, Qatar. And uh, my God, if you think G8 has a problem or if you think G20 has problems, you should see what G195 has. I mean, it's just mind boggling how much despair was there and how all these governments were saying that hey, we don't have enough budgets and the poverty is going to rise and hunger and uh, all sorts of diseases, everything. And uh, it really shook me listening to all of these uh, uh, presentation after presentation, three sobering days of listening to different ministers discussing uh, their uh, predicaments and problems that they were having. So in December, I came and I asked a whole bunch of uh, people in Silicon Valley uh, who were friends who knew a lot about uh, all of these uh, most advanced technologies, newest development. I talked to people at Google, I talked to people at uh, Facebook, at Causes, at uh, School Foundation, a number of different uh, LinkedIn, uh, change.org, uh, do something, name it, many different uh, organizations who have all developed various different technologies and I tried to see how we could define a new pervasive distributed approach to get instead of just the governments come together and do something which has been what traditionally UN has done the convening of the governments to get the people convening of the people and why shouldn't we have a hundred million people go and be involved in achieving these fantastic goals. We needed an architecture and we needed a platform to go and make <coughs> this thing happen. Uh, as far as branding was concerned, we said UN MDGs are too complicated and people do not remember it. We said, why don't we call this the U movement? U on the text messages is Y-O-U, it's the first letter for us. It's the first letter for unity, universality, and happens to be the first letter for United Nations also. So why not create a U movement? And the technology we created is a combination of a widget and a wiki. I'm sure you, many of you are familiar, but in case you may not be, 
A widget is a technology that could be embedded into many different things. It could be embedded in your uh, website, it could be embedded in your uh, profile on social networks, it could be embedded in your emails, uh, in many different things. And a wiki is something that uh, other people can come and add something to it, comment on. So we said in the spirit of a uh, you movement, why don't we combine these two capabilities and create a widget that has wiki capabilities so we call it a Yuki. Are, so today we are announcing creation of the Yuki. Are you going to show it to us? Of course. <laughs> Glad you asked. Let me see if I can. It was just a random guess. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can switch to the, imagine you get a, an email from uh, me, uh, on the signature block, when it talks about me and my title, all of that, there would be something, uh, this is the first uh, draft of it, we are making many more changes, the branding is not done yet. A button that looks like that and some sort of tagline like uh, join now, change the world or something like that. And uh, or when you send an SMS, uh, you will get uh, the same uh, kind of a thing in your SMS and if you Say, what is this? Now, I send a few emails per day, more like a few hundred emails per day, and I have learned that if I send email to people and say, come and donate to this charge, to this uh, project or to this uh, wonderful uh, uh, charity, people after a while delete my emails, uh, they put a turn on their spam filters <laughs> on me, and they don't listen to me anymore. I mean. There are only so much uh, they would put up with me. But when you have it as this, it's totally non-intrusive. People who don't care, just uh, don't pay attention to that, and my email is doing whatever business we are doing. But one person, two person, five person who want to do something, they say, what is this? They would click on it, and once they click on it, it would be something like this that is, uh, actually opens up like that. And they can explore many things right on the spot in a matter of a few seconds or a few minutes. They see a logo that says you, and if they click on it, it tells them about uh, what you movement is all about. And if they want more, they can go to the URL, uh, the website, and learn more. Uh, there is a project for uh, MDG number seven, the environment, ensure environmental sustainability. They can quickly learn about that. Or there is a specific organization called the Child's Right that is doing a project under MDG number seven. As I said, there are millions of good NGOs out there. This might be one of them. And if they want to know what this project is, it says that this project brings clean water to children in China. And they can read about it more, see how many are the beneficiaries. And if they say, where is it in China and what it could be done, it uses the Google map. And um, hopefully, I have the internet connection. It should be coming up, I guess. I don't know why it's not there yet. It's probably Google's fault. <laughs> well. Just picture this, that the Google map comes up and you can zoom in and pan and do all of the things uh, it was working till a few minutes ago. And uh, one of the other things that we have done in there is uh, we allow the donors to comment on this. And uh, since uh, Larry has been a philanthropist for many years and uh, in various different things, has uh, done a lot of donations, he could go and say how happy he has been uh, with this uh, project. And uh, I thought that since Mark is always asking us, give me more, give me more, give me more, uh, we put him as one of the beneficiaries of that project, and he could get some more things out of that. Uh, putting joking aside, actually all of the beneficiaries, like the children who really uh, have benefited from this project, can go and say how good or bad the project was. We are actually embedding uh, technology from UNICEF that people can use their cell phones 
and leave messages in local language and provide a rating of zero to five on each project so you can decide which project is credible, which one is not. So, so, so let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, this goes beyond the Millennium Development Goals. This is really a way of marketing those causes that you feel are part of you. You could choose only one or many. H how many of you uh, saw that amazing movie last night, The Cove, for example? Um, and it was moving, and you craved some action. Uh, and uh, they, they referenced Take Part, which is another website that could be a partner for you. Um, but you could take a, 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 Yuki. Yuki, a Yuki on the Cove, and it could be on every email you send out, and on every text message you send out. And people who are interested then know that your, your brand, your personal brand, is associated with that and they could then follow up on it. Is that is exactly. right about that? That's exactly the case. And also, you can embed this in your website. If you have a website, if you have a profile on Facebook, on MySpace, on any of the social networks, you can embed that. So it becomes part of your identity, the project that on that day or that week you are uh, pushing, and you can change it and each week switch to a different project or stay with the same one. And Kim, how are you going to make money for these projects, help raise money for these projects? There are, we are trying to promote uh, two different ways. One, first one we call it micro-philanthropy. What micro-philanthropy is, we are trying to promote people to think they don't need to be Bill Gates to become a global philanthropist. They can actually, using the Yuki system, uh, click and using their credit card or PayPal or a couple other payment systems, uh, send three bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, small amount to promote their project. And anybody who receives it, if you send me an email for your project, uh, the Cove, I can uh, donate a few dollars to that. So that is creating a culture of micro philanthropy. The second one, which is a lot more interesting and uh, uh, we are working with AdSense, Google AdSense. Uh, those of you who may not be familiar with it, uh, have you noticed how Google has become such a huge successful company? Uh, every time you do a search on any keyword, various different corporations bid on what is the value of that keyword to them. And uh, when you do that search, an ad from that corporation appears there. So here, uh, using AdSense, somebody who has had a bid for that moment, and this changes on real time, uh, being environment, being the word uh, child, and being the word uh, uh, clean water, and China. Or dolphin. Or dolphin for your project. Whoever has uh, paid the highest, and let's assume, since I'm a former HPR, it was a wonderful company that gave me the platform before I became an entrepreneur, if HP has been the highest at that moment, by just viewing this or clicking on that, every time you click on it, so many pennies go to your favorite project directly. And uh, what we try to do is instead of people slacking off and doing nothing, they can become activists. So we call this slacktivism. You can become a slacktivist, and uh, the more you like a project, even if you don't have money, you can just keep clicking and clicking, and with each click, so many pennies go to your favorite project. And soon they'll all be wearing shorts. <laughs> and glasses. <laughs> so, so this is a really good introduction, and this is part of your launch. Um, I'll ask people to start thinking of questions uh, to ask you. But in the meantime, what are your next steps for your launch? Uh, so we just finished the alpha. Uh, we, this is actually, you are seeing the first time uh, that uh, this information, everything was coming off of the real uh, database. We have implemented this on the app engine and uh, it is uh, just a really powerful uh, development environment and uh, we work with Stanford University to put the first 50 projects, real projects, uh, and Stanford uh, students of this class 
went and called up some uh, NGOs, some public benefit organizations, got 50 real projects and started to input it in so we could do the test and in the process debug the system, all of that. So the demo I just uh, gave you came ready uh, last night uh, around midnight. I got the final version of it uh, to come along. Uh, we are going to beta uh, starting today since Alpha is finished. Uh, our goal is uh, by July of this year have about 400 real projects. And now we are working on the user interface making it better and having more hooks to Google Earth, to Google AdSense, to uh, have some customizations on the Google Maps so that it does uh, the things that uh, we need to do on this. And then in July of uh, 2007, there is this big conference, uh, an NGO called iEARN, which is International Earning uh, uh, Education and uh, Resources uh, Network has about a thousand teachers from 65 countries are coming to Morocco. And we are going to go over there and show them the 400 projects and what That's has good. been and get them to go and get these thousand teachers, uh, go and start to put a lot of projects on this. Our goal is by September, which is um, the uh, UN Security Council have 50,000 of these projects in there and uh, have solved a lot of the issues because whenever you bring transfer of money on the international basis, there are unbelievable amount of paperwork, yeah. unbelievable amount of uh, things that have got to get done. I just uh, have selected the chairman of the audit committee for this uh, organization to uh, sit around and work on it because uh, any of you who have had any experiences on even sending small money yeah. from one country to that, uh, the wire transfer costs are 15 bucks, 18 bucks, so transferring a few pennies does not <laughs> make sense. You have to aggregate it, you have to hold it in separate accounts and proper let, things. Let, let's see if we can get some people who want to ask you questions. And while you're moving, you're, if you'd raise your hands and we'll have the microphones come to you. Let me just take one minute and put this in perspective. Um, yeah, I'm going to be talking later about the pandemic, uh, and I'm going to, my new job is to deal with those urgent threats that can bring the world to its knees, whether it's global warming or nuclear weapons, um, whether it's issues about water or conflict in the Middle East, all those cheery subjects. But the one that we don't talk about, which is the most pervasive, the most difficult, and perhaps the most important, is the huge disparity growing between rich and poor. We are at historic levels of that disparity that have never been seen. We have countries that have greater disparity than pre-Bolshevik Russia. And that, uh, the urgent need felt by the UN, these Millennium Development Goals, is not just a moral issue, of course it is an ethical imperative, but it's because historically when that degree of skewedness of income, wealth, and uh, prosperity exists, a turmoil, riot, revolution uh, is almost historically has been inevitable. Um, it's really important that we deal with these Millennium Development Goals. Three billion people um, are without any of the things we consider vital to our lives. Two billion are without water and uh, we have over one and a half billion without any kind of power at all. So the Millennium Development Goals are aimed at that, and I think Cameron deserves a tremendous amount of credit for trying to take the tools of technology and make them happen. Do I, do I see anyone with their hand raised asking questions? I'm, I, I Hi, Sharon I, Anderson Morris over here. Where are you? Hi, I couldn't see SNS you. SNS Project in Qual Africa. Uh, Cameron, I was just wondering, um, I'm, I'm fascinated with what you're doing uh, with you movement, and I'm wondering, what we're trying to do with helping education, connecting sister schools from the United States to sister schools in Africa where there's no technology. If you are working in any areas to help uh, improve that challenge. Well, again, the purpose of Yuki is to be inclusive of all the good projects that are going on. And all you have got to do, and I will be more than happy to work out with you on that, define which NGOs or through what groups uh, you want to do this thing, and we create the Yuki's for that. Our goal is, at the end of our beta, creation of a Yuki should take less than five minutes. 
in less than five minutes, you can put the basic information of uh, what is the name of organization, what is the address, what is the web information, what projects they are doing. Each organization can have one project or 10 or 100 projects and uh, have a way of how the money should go to each one of these and uh, how uh, the uh, different uh, uh, people could come and help it. And uh, in less than five minutes, you can create uh, a Yuki, then you start to embed that Yuki in your websites, in your emails, as we are sending hundreds of emails per day, it promotes that. And what's nice is if uh, Sharon sent me an email with that Yuki there and I checked it out and it was something that I like to do, I can just click on it and that gets embedded on my emails from that point on. So that's the viral part of that. And uh, I did w my first experiment on Facebook on this. Uh, we had a project for Gaza uh, after the war ended uh, January and uh, in three weeks I sent email to my friends at uh, Facebook 4,239 people signed up to help it through a few dollars here, a few dollars there, $11,840 was raised. Just unbelievable how people are uh, really willing to go and help. And Cameron, uh, I think uh, I join with everybody in the room uh, hoping that uh, this activity becomes more successful than any of your public offerings any of your exits, and any of your other uh, amazing accomplishments? Well, it's the biggest project I've ever done yeah. because uh, I had never had a situation to do a project like this before because always as an entrepreneur or in our previous philanthropy thing, we would always go and say, we have an idea, we raise money, we go and put it in one place and then hire the people, full-time people, to go and do it. This is nothing like that. The first gathering we had, everybody said that hey, if we want to encourage other people to provide action and do something, how could we have people who are on payroll? Yeah. So this organization became absolutely virtual, volunteer-based. Nobody gets paid, nobody gets anything, and we have made it as a global development. We are using a base camp on keeping each other informed of the progress. Will you come back next year to, to fire and inform us all? Absolutely. If I get invited, uh, and, get invited? Uh, I try to make my shorts longer this time, so they're getting longer and longer each time, hiding more of my I, I, ugly legs. I thank you very much, <laughs> with or without your shorts. I don't mean it that way. <laughs>